everyone. I'm Mary Paracone, and I'm here with Dr. Suzanne Lee, and we are having a conversation today about the Arcturian Pleiadian Alliance. And these conversations are actually intended as portal openers throughout the planet uh, to instill and to infuse love and forgiveness in all who listen. Uh, in this first uh, session, we'd like to talk to you about um, everyone's involvement in the coming changes, uh, which are intended to bring about new beginnings to all that hear and to all that read uh, these words. So we are asked to stay centered in love and in light throughout these times and all will be well. So Suzanne, yes. good afternoon. How are you today? I'm great. And um, we're interested in hearing of really um, how you feel about these conversations and your, a little bit about your experience and perhaps what the Arcturians and the Pleiadians think about them, about uh, their alliance, how it relates to us in unity consciousness. Well, I first learned about the Pleiadian Arcturian Alliance quite a while back. Um, my first communications with higher beings were with the Palladians, with Matria, who is a, uh, the heroine of the Palladian Perspective books, back in about 1994. Um, and then the Palladians were the ones that first introduced me to interdimensional communications. And then I went on a journey of some of the other expressions of myself in other worlds. And then the Arcturians came in, needed a little bit of preparation because their energy field was much higher. But the Palladian Arcturian Alliance is something that was formed long, long, long ago. Um, and they have come together because the Palladians once had a civilization on Earth long before the earlier times that our history does not even speak of. There is also a Palladian-Syrian-Arcturian alliance and a Arcturian-Syrian alliance. And the Palladians and the Syrians are very active within Gaia's transmutation into our fifth dimensional expression because they both had civilizations here when they were at our age and they are in fact our ancestors and they made a lot of the same mistakes that we have made and so they have come back as our forefathers to assist us at this time and the Arcturians are always involved when there is a planet, person, people, civilization that is on the verge of ascension into a higher frequency. And therefore they have aligned themselves, in this case, which we are speaking, with the Palladians to assist us with our process of ascension. That's wonderful. Um, I was struck by um, the different alliances, uh, Pleiadian, Syrian, Arcturian, Pleiadian, etc. And I, uh, I, I, I thought to myself that we often identify ourselves uh, by ethnicity. Uh, we're Italian, we're French, we're German, we're Native American, etc. Uh, and uh, perhaps uh, that would be a good um, a similarity point uh, to make that and one of the things I received uh, uh, just, this just this morning is that this um, ascension uh, into unity consciousness has much to do with under realizing and understanding the value of our diversity, how our, our strengths come in our diversity uh, and when you were talking about um, the 
um, interdimensional communications and the experience of the Pleiadian and the and Syrian uh, ascensions, I could only think of um, their maturity, uh, their understanding of the process that we are going through uh, now here on Gaia and how important it is for them to hold that knowledge, that understanding, that wisdom, and most importantly, that love, hold that for us as we move through this spiral of ascension. Yes, that is really comforting to know that we are not alone. And what I, Suzanne, say to anyone who might hear this is that every single one of us have the ability to access our higher frequencies of self, which we often think of as our higher guide, but our higher guide is usually a higher frequency of our own multidimensional self. Indeed. So therefore, I, I know that my life would be so vastly, vastly different had I not been able to make this connection to my intergalactic, interdimensional self. And I recommend to everyone who hears this that you remember who you really are, remember these expressions of yourself, and communicate with them because they are there. Just like we talk to ourselves in the physical, we can talk to ourselves beyond the physical. Indeed. Um, before, uh, before we started this conversation, uh, Suzanne and I were, have, were talking about our experiences, our uh, firsthand experiences with our galactic brothers and sisters. And I was sharing with Suzanne uh, that since I was a child, I was, very, I was totally captivated uh, about the stars and about life on other planets. So if we fast forward um, to my life today, um, I would share with you that about two years ago, I began seeing the starships uh, in the sky above where I live. And they manifest uh, in the evening. Whenever I walk outside and I look up and I say good evening, I begin to see um, twinkles, mm. and then the ship will manifest as circular lights, and it will morph into a triangle and shoot up into the sky, and then very slowly come back down to where it began. I call it parking in their parking space. Mm. Um, recently, uh, they have begun to uh, come a little bit closer, uh, flash colored lights, uh, and almost uh, uh, ex look, uh, look like an explosion of light like fireworks, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and I, I interpret that as a message saying, um, we know you're there, we hear you, and we know that you know that we are here. Um, and we are allies and we are friends. And tell all your friends and neighbors that we are here. Uh, so they are there. They are um, uh, are on what we might call the ninth dimension, but they're manifesting uh, in the third and the fourth dimension for everyone to see. You only have to go onto the internet, onto YouTube, and type in uh, galactic sightings, and thousands of videos will come up uh, with... Um, a two, three, four, five minute videos that someone has posted onto YouTube of starships. And that's, that's very exciting. Yes, and I would like to share with people that all of us have different ways of connecting. Whereas Mary has this intimate relationship with being able to see and communicate with the starships, I do not have that particular visual experience. I have had some here and there, but primarily my interaction with galactics have been through the messages that come through me. And I am wanting to expand that into other expressions such as that. But I say that to all of you to 
let you know that if you are experiencing it in a different way from maybe the way Mary is experiencing it or the way that I'm experiencing it, do not discount that as a lesser way. Each of us have a specific reason. We wrote it in our birth plan that we were going to contribute to planetary ascension in the way that we have contributed. And I know with myself, at least so far, had I seen it so much, I don't know that I would be as dedicated to do all of the writing that I have done and all of the things that I have done so far. So remember that your way is the best way for you within this now. And that as we all merge, we will begin to share our myriad ways. And there is no right, there is no wrong, there is just our way. What an excellent point that in that diversity of who we are throughout the planet, that these experiences and this learning is going to manifest individually to each of us. And isn't that a wonderful cause for celebration? Because in sharing those experiences, we learn from one another. We absolutely learn from one, one another and say, wow, that's fantastic. This is the way I experience it. Thank you for mentioning that, Sue. And, you know, that's really is something that's going to get us attached to the unity consciousness because unity consciousness is the key. And the Arcturians have said that over and over again. Our numbers in terms of those of us that are ready to flash into light body is a very small percentage of the earth population of humans. Therefore, it is so important that we unite with each other because as we are awakened, our light of transmutation is hundreds, perhaps thousands of times more powerful than the darkness of those who are still trapped in illusion or confusion or those who are just beginning to wake up or those who are, have no idea whatsoever that any of this is even happening. And so just as every new world begins with the few that feel called within their heart and mind to seek out something that feel within there is more and I must find what that is. Those are us. We are the pioneers of New Earth. Isn't that wonderful? So what I hear you saying that is that we are all brothers and sisters in the one and we are working together in unity consciousness. And that brings about a quick, uh, what I would call a quickening of vibrations throughout Gaia. So personal transformation and planetary transformation occur simultaneously. That's beautiful. Thank you. And, you know, it's much like a relay race where somebody holds a baton and they run for a certain amount of time. And after they have finished their run, they pass it on to their teammate. And then that teammate takes that run. And they depend upon their teammate to take that baton yes. and do their best as they run around that section of the field to pass the baton on to the next. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful descriptor. Thank you. Um, Sue, I wonder if we could take um, a few minutes and talk about um, these conversations as being... Uh, portal openers and what the Arcturians or the Pleiadians might have to say about that and some further guidance. All right, I'm going to call in the Arcturians right now because that's who I'm feeling knocking at my consciousness. Blessings are dear ones and we speak to each and every one of you within our great oneness that has found your way to experience this conversation. We would like to say to each of you that you are ready now. And you know that you are ready now because you have found yourself listening 
to what we are saying. Your consciousness is now prepared to step into the unknown, which is actually the known once you remember your higher frequencies of self. And so, Mary, did you have certain questions that you would like to ask us? Well, yes. I wonder if you could speak to uh, the phrase that I received this morning, that these conversations are portal openers. And what exactly is a portal opening or a portal opener? Um, And how does that relate to... Uh, the work that we will all be doing as we move forward in the ascension process. It is very interesting because this morning, as Suzelle was writing her blog entrance, she was actually writing about portal opening. So she is already primed for the answer to this. A portal is a interdimensional experience. By that we mean that It is an expansion of third dimensional consciousness into higher frequencies of consciousness while you are still awake and grounded in your physical reality. Now, many of you have had dreams, have had deep meditations, have had visions, And we say to you that as a portal opener, we are asking that each of you ground your dreams, your meditations, your visions into your physical form. And to maintain a grounding of your physical form with the awareness that you are not just a human. You are a member of Gaia's planet. And as a member of Gaia's planet, you have volunteered to take on a physical vessel during this transmutational cycle so that you can remember how to remain grounded in your physical expression while you open portals to perceive the higher frequencies of reality that are infinitely swirling through your multidimensional consciousness. As more and more of you open these portals, the illusions of the third dimensional matrix will begin to degrade and the tightness the limitations, the separations, and the old belief patterns of the third dimensional matrix that has restricted Gaia and her humans to a physical reality will begin to morph slowly at first, but gathering speed into the nowness of that transmutation into opening of portals to your higher expressions of your multidimensional realities. Wonderful. I couldn't help um, remembering when you were talking about uh, the falling away of the illusion that uh, so many people are talking about uh, what they would call losing interest uh, in activities and uh, work uh, that they've been doing for many years. And it, uh, for, for those folks, it feels very unsettling, very uncertain. Uh, but it sounds like uh, what you're saying is that this is part of the transition. This is part of moving in to the nowness. Uh, additionally, uh, so many folks are having the experience of losing sense of all time and all space. Uh, we've all felt this, uh, what, we, what I would call a collapse of time where every time I turn around, it's Friday again. And ordinarily, I would say, oh, thank goodness, it's Friday. 
but where did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday go to? And so uh, my interpretation of that, and I think it's what I'm hearing the Arcturians saying, is that in that nowness there is no time and there is no space. And we're moving through that and we're experiencing our essence uh, in a multi-dimensional way. And it's a whole new way of being. Uh, and uh, we are getting our sea legs, if you will, and the grounding is so very important. Thank you. We are Matria. We speak to you now through the being we know as Suzel. We are Palladian. And we first connected with Suzel back in around 1994. In those times, it was not safe for her to use her own name. It was not safe to publicly converse. And the computer was very new, and the internet was just beginning. We talked not just with Suzil, but with myriad others. And each of us Palladians, we found expressions of ourself that had chosen to take an earth vessel. And it is through our own expressions on the physical plane that these portals can best be grounded. We have been in and out of communication with Suzil's conscious mind, but we have been consistently with her throughout her multi-dimensional mind. So therefore we say to all who listen that you have higher expressions of yourself who have likely been in communication with you through your dreams, your meditations, your thoughts, your imaginations for quite a while of your earth quote time. Therefore we recommend and we hope that all of you begin to remember these communications and share them. Share them with as many people in as many ways as you can. For as these conversations become more normal, then our landings will not be something that is frightening. It will be a family member who has come to visit. And there has been a great deal of fear mongering that has been done by those who are terrified of the new world. Therefore, it is very important that those of you who are able to embrace this new world within your consciousness, within this nowness, that you allow yourselves to share with others in as many ways as you feel comfortable. Well, thank you. That was a beautiful message, um, uh, Sue, from Maitreya. And I think it would also be the perfect place uh, to thank everyone for listening today, to thank the Arcturians and the Pleiadians, and a lot of food for thought uh, to continue on in our next conversation. So thank you, everyone, for being with us and for listening, and we'll see you again soon. And thank you so much. I, Suzanne, I'm so happy that you are here. We are keeping these short so that you can fit them into your daily life. You will be able to download them, put them on your phone, carry them around, and remember who you are. Blessings be.